After conducting an exploit, hackers are going to do their best to cover their tracks. We're going to learn just how they do this on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. When a victim's computer is compromised, the hacker gains almost full control over that computer, allowing them to set up payloads such as reverse persistent shells or keystroke duplicators. However, when the hacker is setting up these payloads, they can leave behind some evidence. This evidence takes the form of bash command history or files they need to set up the payload. However, if the hacker is smart, they can delete this command history or any files that are not necessarily to make the payload work. This will decrease the chance that the hacker themselves will get caught and will increase the chance that the payload is effective. Today, we're going to use DRD's article to do just that. And let's get started. So of course this guide is um, dependent on you actually being in um, a target's computer. We're gonna be working as if we're hacked into somebody's computer, whether that's through something like command injection, whether that's, that's through physical access, whether you already set up um, a reverse shell or something like that, that's irregardless. We're just pretending we have direct command line access to their computer. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is set up a directory that we're gonna work with and a directory that we know where it is, that's hard to find and that's um, easy to delete. So to meet the first goal, to find a directory that is hard to find, we can use the find command to find directories that we actually are allowed to write in. So we're gonna use find slash perm 222 type d2 dev null. And it's gonna take a couple seconds and it's gonna return all the directories that we have um, write permissions to. And after a couple seconds, you can see here. So let's go ahead and use the dev S, um, shm directory because that's one that the, the actual user is not likely to be checking too often. So now we can make our secret directory here. And so um, just a quick reminder about hidden versus non-hidden directories. So right now I'm in my home folder. Actually, let's go up one. If I type in ls, I can see that there are these two folders right here. But if I make a directory called test, and now if we um, do an ls, we can see our test folder right here. But now if we make secret, secret test. And if we start it with, oops, we gotta do make dir. If we start it with a, um, a hard stop, then when we make it and we type ls, it's not gonna show up because it's now a hidden directory just because of the period is in the front. So now if we do ls all, and we can see this um, hidden folder right here. So now we're just gonna make a hidden folder um, that we're gonna store all our work in this, the uh, dev slash shm folder. So let's go ahead and do that. So make directory, dev, oops, dev, shm, and we know we have write permissions there because that was what the find function did. And then we're gonna just call it seek, uh, secret. So now if we ls in um, that same folder, of course, we're not gonna see the secret folder. So if the user was poking around their files and they were not being very diligent, they would not see that um, an adversary had made uh, a folder in their computer. And so now in our secret folder, we can store all of our work. So let's navigate to uh, dev shm and let's cd to secret. So now we can like make files. So we can um, we can like make a file logs, collecting some information. This is some information. We can save it and we can save it. And now the user, when they're in this folder, they're not going to know it's even there. And so obviously you're going to be doing more um, bigger stuff in that secret folder, such as downloading some repositories. Um, saving some files there. And then the user, it's gonna be a lot harder to find. And just be sure when you're um, done doing everything you need to do on the target's computer that you can that you remove the um, folder. So you can just do it with remove dev shm secret, just as you would remove, oops, you gotta spell it right though. If you remove a directory, you gotta use rm tac rf and then the name of the directory. And then now when you do ls all, you'll see that secret is no longer um, there. So one thing you can do is um, the log files are actually stored in a very specific directory. And so you can get to that directory by going to bar log and um, it's called auth.log. And it's stored, yeah, it's stored here in the bar.log file. And one thing you can do is just delete, delete the file outright. And yes, we can delete it. Oh, and you do have to be sudo. So this will be after you've done some privilege escalation on the user's computer, so on and so forth. And you know the user's password.
So the next thing we're going to talk about is dealing with off-logs. And so similar to history files, off-logs store um, various activities that take place on the computer. And if the user is savvy, they're going to be able to manipulate those log files and not can manipulate them, but analyze those log files and see if there's any uh, fishy business that has been connected. So the log files are stored um, locally on the computer and they're stored in, C, um, in var log folder. And this is gonna be a folder that you do need um, super user privileges to edit. So this will be something you do after some privilege escalation. And it's important to note that if you're not able to escalate your privileges on the target's computer, you should be wary that you're not gonna be able to directly manipulate the um, log files and it, there's some likelihood that you'll be discovered through something like that. That's one important note. But if you are able to gain super user, super user privileges, you can do anything you want on the computer and delete all evidence that you ever did it by deleting the off logs. So you can just straight up remove off log. And yes, we want to. And oh, we do have to do it as sudo and we can because we escalated our privileges. So if you do become a super user, you can um, manipulate the off log folders by just going to the var um, log folder. And then you can just straight up um, remove the off, oops, off log. Uh, as easy as that. So um, let's see if it's there. Okay. And then um, another thing you can do instead of deleting it outright is using the truncate command and then just setting the size of auth logs to zero. So the last thing we're gonna be covering is actually a uh, tool which combines a lot of the commands into one program. So we can get this program if we go to the null byte article which is linked in the description. We navigate down to step five and we can go ahead and copy this wget command. Oops, just copy it, navigate back to our terminal, paste it in there. Now we can see we have this new cover my ass. All we have to do now is give it um, execute privileges. So we'll use chmod execute and then cover my ass. And now we can execute it as a bash command. And so now we can see we have three options. We can clear the logs for um, the user that we are in right now. Um, we can disable auth and bash history. And option three is used for before you're exiting that user's computer and you want to set everything back to normal so you don't raise any alarms for them. So let's just try option one. And as you can see, it's going to um, try deleting all the logs and everything, but it's only going to be able to do what it can. What it can. So obviously, it can't edit the boot logs and the kernel logs because those files are not writable unless you are a super user. But it is able to edit the bash history um, as a normal user. So it does that. But as you can see, if I type in history now, oops, history, all the history will still be there. It's the last time we deleted it um, because we do need to reload the session for um, the effects to uh, be put in place. And then please cover my ass, we can use two to um, set his file size and his size to zero and I disable the history library. So no history will be saved for this session. And then now if we go to cover my ass again, we can use three to set everything back to normal. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP ZAP, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Prep Course. Check out the link in the description below. We just saw a few quick techniques to eliminate any evidence of user activity on a computer. It's important to remember that techniques like this can also be used to improve personal security on your own computer. If you run into any problems, you can check out the article written by DRD, which is linked in the description. If you have any ideas for a future video, you can hit me up on Twitter at Nick Godshell. Thank you, and I'll see you guys next time.